Hello, this is Virtual as a Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today I played a super fun dynamic line in the Vienna game. I normally play 30 minute games and this was a rapid 10 minute game where there were tons of errors from both my opponent and me. In this game I played a wayward queen, that is an early queen h5. Please enjoy! Let's first have a look at the review. This is chess.com's algorithm and you can see a lot of little red dots which are all blunders. So not a very high accuracy game, 64% for me and about 54% uh, for my opponent. But this was a 10 minute uh, game um, on another platform. So it's so a quite a bit faster, um, you know, good share of mistakes uh, and blunders. However, I did do relatively well against my opponent uh, in this game overall. Uh, so wild, chaotic chess. Let's have a quick look now at the analysis. So I played white, opponent black, and I played the Vienna, so e4, e5, knight c3, and opponent responded with bishop c5 immediately, which is the Anderson defense. Now with the Anderson defense, uh, one of the possible moves is immediate queen h5, the wayward queen. Uh, the wayward queen attack. And one of the interesting things here is that it actually is slightly good for white, which is a bit unusual because a usual wayward queen attack, uh, which would be sort of uh, queen h5 on move two after e4, that's objectively actually uh, bad uh, for white. Now, um, there is a, a very similar move uh, in the Anderson to the wayward queen attack, which is actually moving the queen to g4 rather than h5, and that uh, puts an attack potentially uh, on the uh, g7 pawn. Uh, and that is actually called the, the giraffe attack, apparently. So I'm not too sure why it's the giraffe attack, uh, but, but there is that. Uh, now, the point of um, queen to uh, queen to h5 is if the opponent uh, plays carelessly. So let's say uh, putting um, knight to f6 with an attack on the queen, or or maybe um, whoops, ah, or maybe maybe putting um, the pawn to g6 again with an attack on the queen. Um, in these situations, the queen can immediately take uh, the pawn on e5 with check, uh, and then the next move, the bishop is lost. So, you know, uh, that's a fairly simple tactic. So most people, I would imagine, uh, would see through that. And, and that's obviously the best move, d6, protecting that pawn. Now, the next move here is uh, bishop c5. So uh, double attack on the weak, C, uh, the weak f7 pawn. And again, if the opponent doesn't address this, this is potentially checkmate next turn, which would be a uh, scholar's mate. Um, but you know, that's again, fairly easy to block. And the whole point here um, is to try to weaken, you know, force this move uh, g6, which if the opponent was thinking of potentially doing a kingside castle, there is now a weakness there. And with the bishop already out, uh, that bishop can't be in a fianchetto position. Uh, and you can see plus 3-8, almost plus 4 for white. So this is actually good uh, for white. And at this point, there's a number of moves for the white queen. So the white queen can go to f3, uh, again, with a potential attack on the f7 pawn and a potential scholar's mate, or you can actually just bring the queen all the way back to d1, which is what I chose to do in this game. And you will notice there's not very much between them, so it's basically equal moves. And even though the queen is back to its opening square, um, white is still advantaged. And I think it's because of this weakening of the kingside pawns. So, so that was pretty happy, uh, pretty happy with that. Um, opponent plays knight f6, which is a good move. I develop d3. Uh, they push knight to g4. Um, so potentially now with sort of an attack on my weak uh, f pawn, uh, I decided to play uh, knight h3 to put an extra defender 
on that pawn. Um, the opponent now plays queen h4 uh, again, so looking at attacking that pawn. And here I actually didn't see a, um, a potential uh, very strong move, which is actually the bishop to g5 attacking the queen. Uh, instead, I opted to short castles here to put the rook as an extra defender uh, of that pawn. Um, so not as good as that bishop move, but still substantially ahead uh, of black, especially given that I'm only on move 8. Um, the opponent decides to just double down and, 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 and capture the pawn. Um, that allows me to capture back with rook, captures, captures, and this is generally good. So rooks often aren't really felt in the early game and trading two minor pieces, so the opponent's uh, knight and bishop for one rook is definitely good uh, for me. So you can see almost plus five now. And those were two very active pieces for, for black. Um, they've lost those pieces pretty much apart from the queen. Everything is still undeveloped. Uh, and all I have lost is one rook. So uh, I, I was pretty happy with that transformation. Though, you know, still have to be careful because, you know, there are queens hanging around. The, there are potentially, you know, there are, if I'm not careful, there may be checkmate sort of opportunities for black here. So here I decide to push my knight to d5, uh, and, uh, and what I potentially saw it was um, the attack uh, uh, to capture pawn c7, uh, and then that uh, rook will fall. Opponent pushes f5, uh, which is a very bad move, as you can see, almost plus uh, eight and a half now. However, here in the short game, I got enamored by the idea of uh, being able to do a, a double check. This double check, however, actually doesn't go anywhere because the, neither the knight or the bishop can immediately capture another piece um, you know, without there being a problem afterwards. I really should have uh, stuck to my plan. Um, so move the knight with check, um, capture c7, and then capture the rook on a8. So that's really what I should have done. Um, but, you know, I just like the idea of the double check so much, and I did the double check. Uh, this doesn't actually improve my position, because here, what am I, you know, I haven't really got anything to do. I could capture that bishop, but, you know, I'll be just captured back uh, by the rook. So here I make a, a, a blunder, uh, and I sort of realised this, I probably shouldn't have done that move. Just pushed ahead, captured pawn, uh, they captured back with bishop, um, which was what I hoped they would do. Uh, that allowed me to capture it. So at least there was some equal trade here. However, I have to be very, very careful here uh, because potentially that uh, would be, uh, no, that would be a straight out loss for a piece. And uh, I'm sort of potentially, uh, you know, there, there's a potential mating net here uh, for my opponent. So um, I move my, uh, my, my knight out of the way so I don't sort of just straight out lose that piece. Uh, they started bringing their other pieces, so knight c6, which was good. Um, I decided to push uh, pawn g4 with an attack on the rook, uh, hoping that I would induce a potential error, and there it is. There's the error. So that square, of course, is guarded by my bishop. Diagonals can sometimes be hard to see in a rapid game. So capture, uh, back ahead now. I'm pretty happy. But, you know, their pawn is coming down. I have no easy way to immediately capture that pawn. So again, need to be very, very careful. Though I am now uh, materially ahead. Um, I played uh, c3, thinking that would sort of potentially reduce the mobility of the opponent's knight. Um, the computer thought that bringing the knight back to block the advance of the pawn was better, especially given that that rook uh, is not there now. They bring rook to f8, uh, which uh, wasn't, wasn't a good move for them. Uh, I moved my queen, which wasn't the, the most accurate move for me either. Again, I, I did see I needed to block the advance of that, of that pawn, which is why I decided to move the queen. However, I immediately then can be under attack um, by, by the opponent's knight. I decided to move the queen back, um, uh, you know, inviting a queen trade, and I was actually very happy. Uh, that they were willing to trade. And as you can see, Stockfish thought that this was a blunder, that uh, the opponent should have just captured my pawn, put me into check, but I thought they might have found the queen trade irresistible. That's good for me, because my queen was not doing all that much, you know, was defending, while their queen was deep in my territory, you know, looking very aggressive. So I've basically now nerfed their most aggressive piece. So things are looking uh, good for me, it makes it easier to play. Uh, they capture, 
that's fine. Bring the king back. Uh, they bring the uh, the knight forward again. Here I decided to move my bishop out of the way. Opponent you know, brings their pawn forward. Uh, again, this is, these are all good moves for the opponent when they've got so many pawns, fewer pieces, they need to push their pawns. So I move my knight out of the way. Move again, now with a potential attack on the rook. Uh, they play, uh, play that, so now I need to move my bishop out of the way. So the opponent has been playing quite well, and if you notice, I've actually completely lost my advantage here. So back to zero, zero, zero. They push another pawn. I now bring uh, my knight back. So one of the goals of creating a sort of a chain of pawns now allows me to bring that knight, uh, knight back with defense, blocking the advance of their rook. So that's good. I'm potentially inviting a trade. I did want to get rid of that knight, but it wasn't exactly that easy to do so. They decide to push another pawn. Now that's a mistake because now potentially I can bring my king forward with an attack on that knight, no longer guarded by that pawn. So whenever you move pawns, you do have to think about what do you lose because they can only go forward, they can't go backwards. So bishop b5, an attack on the on the rook, so they're forced to move their rook out of the way. That was a bad move because it doesn't really achieve uh, very much. Um, and here I make another sort of redundant move, so I lost two tempo because I would be perfectly happy, to be perfectly honest, for the rook to capture my, my knight given it's guarded by the bishop. So that was simply a loss of two tempo, so that was a mistake. And potentially if the opponent had pushed their pawn forward, I was actually in some trouble given that I'm no longer able to block uh, with the king um, and that square is guarded by their knight. They, uh, they push their, uh, their knight uh, so their, their rook to f4, and here I saw a chance. So here uh, I was very happy they didn't end up pushing their, their pawn. So now king f2 attacking the knight. Uh, here they make a mistake trying to guard the knight rather than just evacuating the knight because now I can bring bishop here, and because the rook can only go, uh, you know, uh, along. Uh, along files and, and ranks, and with, uh, they can't move in diagonals, they've been boxed in. They can only go in, in sort of one of two positions. So they decide to move back. That now allows for a capture of the knight. Uh, opponent here, I think had only seconds left, rushed a move, uh, made a mistake, and then uh, opted to resign in the final seconds because they've now just hung their final piece. So I was very happy well, with how I played in this game. One at the end, um, but uh, you know, did make some mistakes uh, along the way. Uh, great game from the opponent, GG. In the Anderson defense line of the Vienna game, the goal of queen h5, or the wayward queen, on move three is to induce a potential future weakness in the opponent's kingside pawns. Careless play by black can also result in early catastrophic material loss, or even a scholar's mate, though this is much less likely to occur once the opponent is above 1000 elo. The interesting thing about this line is that it is objectively good for white, even though the regular wayward queen attack is objectively slightly bad. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching!